Hey everybody, this week we're going to review low-cost spindle sanders. And it gets a little confusing because when you go looking for them, you're going to find them all over the place. And they all kind of look exactly the same. In fact, when you dig into the features, you're going to find that they're all standard plug-in 120 volt, 3.5 amp, half horsepower motors. All of the features appear to be very similar, if not the same, across every one of these things. They're all 30 pounds. They all have a cast iron tabletop. They're all the same. So there's some bad news and good news with this uh, realization. Uh, it leads to some consumer confusion because you're trying to figure out if there's a difference between them. There's also definitely a wide cost difference between these guys too, some on sale, some not. But the good news here is that there's probably a single manufacturer that creates these things and then puts private labels on them for others to resell. So that means that there's a proven quality design here and that resellers trust the product. So I chose to go with the Wood River Oscillating Spindle Sander and this is from a retail store called Woodcraft. You can buy this stuff online. In fact, uh, uh, you'll see, uh, again, this same exact style sander being sold at a variety of home centers uh, and other tool manufacturers. So if you can get past the confusion, uh, look for one that's got a good price. So I actually went to my local Woodcraft store and I picked this up and we're going to unbox it together. So the instructions come on top. In fact, there's not a lot to the instructions because as we're going to find out in a second, there's really not a lot to the assembly. So the accessories are going to include uh, uh, different plates that will go on top of the uh, sander to accommodate the size of the spindle that you're going to put on there. There's going to be a series of hard rubber uh, spindles that go on top of the shaft that the sandpaper that will go uh, around. And there's five of these hard rubber uh, hard rubber. Uh, spindle inserts. Now there's, there's a little bit confusing because when you read the features there are going to be six different sizes for the spindle sander but only five rubber inserts and that's because the sixth uh, smallest diameter of uh, the sandpaper roller sandpaper tube fits right over the top of the half inch shaft and it doesn't require the uh, rubber insert. So after you pull out the big honking piece of styrofoam, everything else is assembled. I was really pleased um, when I opened the box to find out how simple it was to get this thing set up. So it all comes wrapped in plastic and part of that reason is uh, you're gonna find that there's some oily residue on the tabletop because it is cast iron. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But all you really need to do at this point is to take everything out of their storage bags uh, and to read the instructions, uh, which I had done online as well, uh, to find out how to actually get this set up. Also be sure, I want to say this every time we talk about a power tool, to read the safety instructions uh, inside of these things. Now these are going to create a lot of dust uh, and there's going to be a vacuum port on the back side that we'll show you in a second for dust collection but it's for the small uh, diameter hose, like a small shop vac hose right there. Uh, it doesn't really fit my, my larger diameter hoses, so I'm going to have to come up with an adapter. But you're going to want to wear a dust mask for protection here, and you're going to want to wear eye protection, depending on the grit of the sandpaper that you choose to put on there, because it's just going to fly stuff off of the spindle. So it's pretty hard rubber. Um, and on the back of the spindle sander, there's uh, uh, places to be able to store each one of these uh, rubber inserts, which was pretty cool. You don't have to worry about losing the parts. They fit on uh, those little spindle holders really nicely. So again, there's five of those rubber inserts, and then there's six diameters of provided sandpaper. Uh, I don't remember the grit on this, but I think it's probably about 100, between 80 and 100. And depending on the work that you're going to do, if you're going to do some grinding, uh, you may want to get yourself uh, like a 60 grit uh, uh, tube 
to work with, and that'll help you grind off that. But for the finer stuff, obviously, you're going to need uh, finer grits. Now it comes with six different uh, inserts to fit in the tabletop, depending on the diameter of the spindle sander that you use. And so the one I put in there, the orange plate that I put in there, is for that half inch shaft of diameter. Now the other thing that's going to come packaged in here are a series of plates. So I uh, jumped the gun when I put that orange insert in there. Uh, the bottom of that shaft needs that largest black metal plate that you see there to sit inside the machine. So again, there's a variety of diameter sizes uh, on those table inserts to match the diameter of the spindle you put on there. Uh, and also, we talked a little bit about the, the top. It's got an oily residue. So you're going to want to clean this off with uh, some uh, either acetone or mineral spirits and then wax the top. Now, you can use a paste wax, but believe it or not, I use furniture polish for my table saw and everything else that's got an iron top. Uh, it's pretty easy to wipe on, gets into the nooks and crannies, uh, works really well to keep the rust away. Here's a shop tip for you. So once you take the nut off of the uh, top of the shaft, there's that big plate. That big plate goes all the way down and that's the base for any size of the sandpaper or that spindle that you put on there. So that base holds it. And then you've got to select the correct washer to go on top of that because what you're going to be doing when you tighten down the nut is you're going to compress that rubber which is going to put a stronger grip on the sandpaper. So you use the washer uh, that's appropriately sized to the spindle. Smaller washer goes for the smaller spindle. Larger washer goes for the larger spindles. And once you tighten it down, it'll compress the rubber. And we'll just put the nut on there. Now, because this motor is geared uh, it didn't need a secondary tool to hold that shaft for me to tighten it down. So, uh, you know, it, the shaft didn't, when you turn it, try to turn it by hand, it's pretty, pretty rock solid. So you can hold it by hand and tighten that nut down and get a good grip on that uh, sandpaper roll. And then we'll pick the right diameter for that table insert. And I thought I had the wrong one, but it turns out I had the right one. I also like the way these things are stored. And every one of the, uh, again, every one of the sanders that you look at commercially has exactly the same features, same setup, and we're ready and we're good to go. It's going to oscillate up and down, and it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, work area here, so you can use some pretty thick dimensional lumber uh, for the sander. And I had just a curved piece of plywood I wanted to test out. Now, because this uh, entire uh, appliance weighed 30 pounds, it didn't move around on my tabletop uh, all that much. Now, I didn't actually have this thing clamped down or screwed down, but, uh, you know, just doing light work here on this piece of plywood, uh, the tabletop was very stable. I think if you're going to be using big lumber and you're going to be... Um, uh, you know, using it a lot during the day, it makes sense to screw this thing down to a, a tabletop. So what's our overall summary? Um, I thought it was really convenient. I like the layout. All the pieces and parts fit together within the machine. It's very compact. It's good weight. The tabletop, I like the curved nature of it. It allows you to work it. And overall, um, I think I bought mine from Woodcraft, but I think you'd, you'd do well to just pick up your best deal on this. They're they all have the same warranty. Uh, you're not going to go wrong. So quick assembly, nothing much to put together. All the accessories are provided. Uh, I got a really good deal. I was about 120 bucks on mine. It's very stable on the bench top, really effective for inner curves, very easy to swap out the spindle diameters. So two thumbs up on this particular purchase. I was really pleased with it. So that's this week's video. Hey, thanks for watching.